What does it mean to go from pandemic to endemic? What should we know about when it comes to living with the virus? Well, to dig into this, we have with us today, Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, a senior director of GBAC, a division of ISSA, which is the Worldwide Cleaning Industry Association. Gavin, thanks for joining us. Hi, Jeff. So Gavin, there is some news recently that the United States is in transition phase with the pandemic. In fact, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the chief medical advisor for the president, he said this, and I'll paraphrase, the United States is certainly right now out of the pandemic phase. And to be fair, he quickly added that the pandemic isn't over, but it's in a transition phase. So I'm sure, Gavin, you're monitoring this. Uh, what does this mean to go from pandemic to endemic? Is it all over for us? It's a great question, Jeff. Um, let's understand what pandemic versus endemic means uh, when it comes to infectious diseases. So the pandemic, when we use that, it means it's, it, there's widespread infection throughout the world. And that's going to continue because based on people moving, vaccination rates, and the fact that this virus changes continuously. Now, let's focus back on the U.S., if we call this endemic, we're going to start referring to the situation in a country like the US, like, that means that, the, that COVID-19 will be regularly found um, among some people. So some people will still get sick. Uh, it'll be found in certain areas. And, and it's really important to understand it when we determine an infectious disease as being endemic, that when you travel outside your home at any time, you could get infected. So you still got to take yeah, do some precautions. So Gavin, um, at events, you didn't see the cleaning crew that often in the past, but today it might be different. What are you seeing when you go to events? Really interesting, Jeff. I've been to a number of events, both in the US and overseas recently. Uh, what I'm seeing on a day-to-day -day basis at the meetings and conventions that I'm going to and in hotels and convention centers, the cleaning staff are visible. They're there. They're not working in the hours of darkness. They are being used strategically, sensibly, responsibly, also based on hazards and, and a risk assessment by identifying what, what those surfaces that get touched often by people uh, at a meeting or a convention. And then the staff are going in and cleaning and disinfecting those surfaces, um, especially those, those ones that we frequently touch. But more importantly, they're also cleaning the restrooms more often, more frequently. And what I saw just recently in the last couple of weeks at, at a lot of conventions that I went to was actually the attendees actually saying thank you to the cleaning staff for the work they do. That's nice. I think you went overseas for something recently and you were surprised by what you were given at a convention. Talk about that. Yes, Jeff. So I, I, it wasn't just overseas. I went to Singapore recently for a, um, a, a Clean Leaders Summit, which was fantastic. It was a great convention. But I've also been to um, three different conventions and meetings here in the US just recently, and all of them did the same thing. And I wanted to start by saying that when you go to registration, you get your name badge. And I received at these meetings you know, this is the reusable shopping bag. You know, this is something to put all the swag in and the, and the material that you get at, at the convention. In that swag, this is that this is at the re re registration desk. They gave me two masks. Oh, okay. One white, one black. I really couldn't work out, Jeff, whether which one I was going to wear, wear in the daytime versus the nighttime. But I, there, there must be a reason. But it was great. You got two different masks. It depends if you want to be hidden in the dark or not. Well, exactly. And it depends. I didn't want to clash with what I was wearing. It was really important. Um, hand sanitizer was I've being, seen that out, before. Yeah. being handed out at registration. Uh, a pack of alcohol wipes, which I thought was fantastic. And then other, the other thing, and this has been happening now, not just at one meeting or one convention, but at, at, at the others, a reusable stainless steel straw. And I thought, what a great idea. And maybe this is the, the, this is the regular swag that's going to be handed out at every convention center or every meeting that we have now where the, lots of people go, go and attend. I, I just thought what I saw in the last two weeks was wonderful. The, you brought that metal straw home. Is that TSA approved? Actually, <laughs> this actual metal straw I received two days ago at a, um, at a meeting I went to just here locally uh, oh. near Washington, D.C. Okay. Well, I guess even the handouts we're going to see at events are going to change. That's cool. Gavin, is there ever going to be a time when we don't panic when someone sneezes or coughs around us? 
Uh, I'm not sure, Jeff. I really, I think at the moment um, we have to be very cognizant and, and understand that it's, it's so important to be kind and compassionate. We have to understand that there are still people within our communities, our neighbourhoods that are vulnerable to infectious disease agents. Uh, and what I what 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 really encouraged me um, at going to these conventions and meetings in the last couple of weeks, Jeff, is that. There were some that didn't wear masks, and that's okay, because that's their personal choice. And there are other people that chose to wear a mask, like myself, because I didn't know the people that I was, I was mixing with. But more importantly, I wanted to ensure that I protected others as well. That's why I wear a mask. Um, hand washing's increased. And again, as I said before, the cleaning staff, the cleaning crews uh, are more visible during daylight hours. All good news there. Um... Gavin, let's wrap it up. Talk about some studies you've seen recently that have been published. Uh, lots of studies coming out, Jeff. Um, again, the way, the way that we publish some of these studies, they're not accessible to the general public. So it's really important that you know we at ISSA and at GBAC, we share these studies as quickly as possible. Uh, CDC has released a, a new report with a lot of infographics. So I just quickly want to go through what they have mentioned this week. Two out of three people in the US are fully vaccinated right now. Three out of five people have already been infected at least once by the coronavirus. One in four had for the very first time infection during the winter months this year, and that was most likely due to the Omicron variant. But the other really important point that CDC's released was that please remember that, it, that up to 30% of anyone you know, in the population that get infected, up to 30% of the people get infected, you can develop what's called long COVID. And that's where you have these long COVID symptoms for months, weeks, um, you know, weeks or months, fatigue, shortness of breath. You know, people struggle just to do simple everyday activities like walking upstairs. And then the second study that just came out yesterday, April 27th, uh, Jeff, was um, published in the British Medical Journal. This is a study of in the US, of US counties. And the take home message from this study is that for every 10% improvement in COVID vaccination coverage in a US county, there was an 8% decrease in deaths. And that's a really important message. Those vaccinations are preventing severe COVID, decreasing the risk of hospitalization and decreasing the risk of dying. <music>